Hello friends. <laughs> I'm gonna take you along my day today, but it is a crazy busy day. And I am really behind on videos, so I kinda need to make a new video. And days like this, I normally don't like bring you along, but I kinda need a video. And maybe it'll be interesting. Maybe you'll enjoy like just the craziness that is my life. That was nice, Kaylee. <laughs> Three of my older kids are home. It is late start. Wednesday. We've all been kind of avoiding a certain Warpath child who stayed up till 1130 last night and did not have a good morning. <laughs> we packed her lunch literally like two minutes before we walked out to the bus. So that's kind of where we're at this morning. It's also, so I have a super busy day and in order to, <laughs> I have to eat is what I'm trying to like get at. I won't be able to function out and about today. Kaylee, did you eat the last bagel? I hate when people do this. Like, find a container for this. Okay, so normally I don't eat right now. It's not even nine o'clock. I normally do intermittent fasting. Did you eat the last bagel, Kaylee? There's no way I can run all my errands. I have a nail appointment. I have an ultra ultrasound scan. I can't do all of that on an empty intermittent fasting stomach. I can't do it. Oh, I literally just bought bagels yesterday. They're hiding them. My kids started to hide food. Okay, we're going for it today. I'm having a full carb breakfast. <laughs> I'm having a bagel and cream cheese and a glass of chocolate milk because oh, why don't they make these easier to open? Have a good day. The older kids are going to school and I came in here to leave. This is my ladder room, if you are new. Yeah, that's what I came into and I was like, oh, I have to finish this laundry before I go. I have to at least, this is clean. Oh, bloody, this is clean. Oh, crap. Okay, luckily I didn't put that in. <laughs> Oh, this is all clean folded laundry. I almost just checked in a whole load of clean laundry. All right, we're just gonna wash that blanket and a few sweatshirts and... Okay, well that's better than I thought it was. But I uh, just responded to a comment from a video um, talking about how to clean this filter out of your washer. And that video, the first video that we did years ago about how to clean your filter out on your washer and dryer, on your washer, I should say. It was like our first time doing it, our second time actually cleaning that filter out. We didn't know to take the cap off of the little hose, so water kept going everywhere. And we were frustrated, we're like, this has to be like wrong. We knew it had to be wrong, but we were just showing you how to like put towels underneath there. It's a learning process and we don't ever claim to be like experts at anything. <laughs> We just know how to do some things and we would just like to take you along the process. But the comment was like, you should be making instructional videos if you aren't the expert. You guys, YouTube isn't necessarily for experts. It's for like learning how to do things. It's like just gaining knowledge and helping each other out. Like that's why people make instructional videos. It's not because we're experts. It's because we want to like help, you know, help another guy, you know, help another friend. No, I'm not an expert at how to like change the filter on my washer, but we learned how. I think the next time we did it, we're like, wait, can we take this cap off? Yes, you can take the cap off. And yes, that makes all the difference. So just so you know, when we make like a tutorial video, which we haven't done in a long time, we're not experts. We don't claim to be. <laughs> we're just average people doing average things. But guess what? Now people know they need to change the filter on their washer and dryer. So anyway. You know how hard it is to fold a towel? I did it. I folded a towel one-handed. But So I'm gonna hurry and fold the towels. I'm gonna leave the rest to fold later, honestly. But I haven't done really like an updated laundry routine video or anything because the routine is still the same except for the older kids are starting to like not learn how to do their own laundry. They know how to do it. On days where like this where I really can't keep up with it and get it done and they need their laundry, they tend to move it and fold it and 
take their own stuff. So it's like the further I get behind, I'm like, is my sweatshirt done? And I'm like, yeah, it's in the dryer. Here's your hangers. <laughs> oh, okay, I get it. They gotta learn to grow up. They gotta learn to do their own thing. So anyway, my, my laundry routine hasn't changed at all. I'm just teaching it to my children. So I haven't really updated that video at all. So I am putting my hangers here. If you are new, I'll give you a little quick um, rundown. I use hang on let me put these up first so i do hangers that are color coordinated my husband has kind of the, the leftovers <laughs> but don't have enough in any color he so he gets the green ones i have white ones and then my oldest has this color of blue um, but you can always tell when i don't have their laundry to do because i don't have hangers so that's always a good sign but if i have a lot of hangers from someone that means i probably have a lot of their laundry that i need to do these ones are chelsea's and then I'm missing Ashley's because I just saw that they're all on her floor. So those ones will need to be brought down. But everyone has color coordinated hangers and then they get put here when I do it. And then everyone knows to take their color. And as they're all kind of growing up and kind of becoming the same size, it actually comes in handy to have the color coordinated hangers so that all the clothes go to the right bedroom. Also, despite Jason's best efforts, and I put these in order, youngest, oldest, oldest to youngest, it's in the same order. He still doesn't know what color everyone's hangers are. So that's why he doesn't do the laundry. I don't mind, I do the laundry. And he also doesn't know the clothes. I only know the clothes because nine times out of 10, I buy them and I order them. And I know the brands and I know the stores and I know their sizes, but they are creeping up on the same sizes and so it gets tricky like they all order their underwear from the same websites now and I'm like uh you guys have to order different patterns <laughs> there's no way I can keep track of everyone like because they all ordered like plain black underwear I'm like I can't keep track of that so this is a little update on my laundry room just to do I don't know I feel like I'm not doing different content so if you guys have ideas of things you would like us to do here on these videos um, let me know down below but i have to run i'm actually have to run i was going to go to marshall's before but now i actually have to go to get my nails done because you guys i don't know if it was the last person who did it and she did it wrong every single cuticle line on my on these nails they still look really good and it's driving me crazy because I could go another week. I could like make these work for another week. This one's look, feeling a little cruddy, but I could make it work. And I'm all about like stretching my budget because this is an extra thing for me, but I'm giving it to myself. I'm like, I want to feel nice. So I'm allowing myself now to have nails. The problem is that all of the cuticle lines on the nails have lifted. And so I go to like itch my hair. I'm not gonna do it right now. And I catch every single hair if i like pull my shirt on it catches on a thread if i like go to pull up my pants it catches on a little thread on my pants or my shirt it drives me insane and i can feel it and it's sharp and like so i they are three weeks old to be fair but dip nails do last a long time and i have made them last like three and a half weeks before but these ones are coming off and I'm going to tell them like, can you do a better cuticle line this time? I want to kind of get closer to the holidays with these ones. It's not. All right, Chelsea, are you the last one here? Yeah. Are you, you're dressed, right? Okay. <laughs> she is going to school today. Yes. You're feeling okay? Yeah. Um, just in case anyone knows, she was sick for two days. So I'm glad you're feeling better. Do you have a lunch pack? Yeah. Okay. Can I take this now? Yes, take both of those now. That's just a daytime cold pill. All right, I'm gonna go. Have you sweat? No. You have, you have time, you have 25 minutes. I have too much time, I do nothing. You have time to do the floors. I'll take this out and I'll take this out so you can do the floors. Life is a winding road. No telling where it goes. Driving through. Okay, I just got here. Marco Polo of my sister while I drove here and I need to make sure that I have a book. Oh, I 
spiders in two days. I don't think I'll be able to finish this one. I might just start this one. Um, I have to just listen to books um, because I don't have, I can't like scroll on my phone when you get dip nails. So I'm going to see if I have a different book I can download. Starry Miss, no that one's Jason's. Do I have another one ready? I don't have another one ready. Bummer. I have a few on hold. I don't have any on hold. Anyway, I think I'll have to listen to the ones I've already got. I also need to check my Venmo balance to see if I have money to pay for this. <laughs> if I have money in Venmo, it's like money already spent. So I'm gonna see if I have any more. <laughs> see if I have money to pay for this. They like it when I Venmo my payment for this salon, which is helpful. Okay, do I have money? I also have to go to the bathroom. What is my balance? $385. I have money. I was supposed to transfer that for my Hawaii money. But I'll take a look, take it for nails. So I should I should actually transfer that and cash that out, but it's in a secure place, so I'm gonna go dark. I hope they have dark green. I can transition from Thanksgiving to Christmas. Alright. Love how they came out. It's like a dark teal green. I just want it dark and I love it. I love how they turned out. Next up is Marshall's. And I started listening to this book and it's a really good true crime, not a true crime, but a crime thriller. And I love those kinds of books. So that was kind of fun to listen to. All right, I am hiding some Christmas presents underneath these. They're mainly stocked up on face wipes. I'm plum out, none of us have any and we use these all the time. I was able to find two of them on clearance for $3 and then I got this big pack for five. So, stocked up on those. I did find a few Christmas presents. I did run into Jacob's mom while, we, while I was here. It's fun to talk to her. I talked to her about how Kaylee said that Die Hard was a Christmas movie and she's like, well played Kaylee, well played. You, <laughs> she's like, my husband is going to love that. I told her, yes. Jason was very proud of her too for saying that. I have now an hour before my ultrasound scan. Um, I found out, I checked my, I always write out, write what kind of scan I'm having done. Um, it's a lady parts and stomach scan, which means I will get a lot of money for that, which is why I always sign up for them. If you are new, I volunteer for a ultrasound company and I am a test model for their equipment and um, they pay me to test it so that's where I'm going in an hour I think I'm gonna try and grab a little bit of a bite to eat I hate doing that on the road but it'll waste more time and gas to go all the way back home because I'm so close to where the ultrasound place is so I might just sit and peruse um, Christmas presents on my phone from the car while I wait and listen to my little crime book on my audiobook on my headphones. All right, um, Ashley's coming out, but before she comes out, I took a nap when I got home. I got home about an hour early and then I had therapy with her therapist and we've got a lot to work on. But she is coming with me now. We're going early to tumbling and cheer because we're going to look for what? Yarn. Yarn. And we're going to go see if it's on sale and what happens if it's not on sale. Okay. Yes, because the cost is so high per skein of this kind of yarn, it isn't worth getting if it's not on sale. But maybe we can just look around for something, more Christmas ideas. Yes? Yeah. We have a little toy and slime section. Maybe you even look at like fidgets or something. Yeah, but I'm getting it for Kaylee. Well, I know. But ideas for you um, to get for Christmas. But yes, who do you give to? Kaylee. Yeah, you need to. And and sister gifts, um, we did draw names, I don't know, maybe a week ago, week and a half ago. Um, we don't ask someone to get us something when it's a sister gift. We intuitively need to find something that makes us think of our sister and think that she might like that. Or we have to ask someone who knows her really well. What do you think I should get her? So that it's a surprise. We don't make Christmas lists for sister gifts. Yeah. Yes. My brother still tries to do that when he gives to me. We rotate presents 
with my whole family. There's eight kids now and my dad. And, you know, we just rotate each family every year. Um, so this year I give to my older brother one step up from me. And next year I'll give to my twin sister one step below me. <laughs> and uh, my younger brother always, hey Dana, what do you want for, <laughs> for Christmas? I'm like, Daniel, wow, this works. This isn't like mom giving presents to the kids. Like you should just, just know, just think about what we would like as a family. He does pretty good. Yeah. Last year, I don't remember. He got some, like a really huge box of uh, snakes, like sour snakes. And then he got Yeah, us that's and, right. And then he got us like a gift card to a movie theater. Yeah, that was a really good idea. And I think we got some more snacks. Yeah, the, the sour patch things yeah. were definitely something that the kids like. Um, and the movie pass. We were able to go to see a movie with that pass. That was kind of fun. Um, so anyway, that's what we're doing. It is about 4.30 and <laughs> I'm kind of ready to be done for the night, but it's just starting for me. After I wait for her and her tumbling class, I'm going to check back. Did you get your lunch? Yes. Um, I'm going to check in with her when she has a little snack in between her two classes. They have a little lunch room and the kids um, stop and have a little snack. It's basically like a school. Yeah, yeah. And so I will check in with her and then I have an activity at church um, because our area combined into one large conglomerate of people, we don't know half the people that we go to church with now. And so we're all having a get to know you activity and an apple dipping bar like an apple caramel dipping kind of a thing it's kind of like those charcuterie boards where they do um chocolate and peanut butter and caramel and and all the different fixings that you could dip apples in then this girl will get picked up by dad after her cheer class he was initially going to have a problem with picking her up because now we only have two cars and he was scheduled inventory for tonight at the store. And I was like, this is not gonna work. Kaylee won't have a car to go and pick her up. So he well, actually- He does, we do have a car to pick me up, but- No, it's down at the tire place. No, Jacob's. Oh, I didn't want to have to make Jacob stay. He is over the house right now, but I, I don't like him yeah. be my chauffeur <laughs> for my own kids. Um, but anyway, oh, yeah, uh, there's cars brake lights right on my face. That's why I'm all red. Uh, but Jason was like, you know what? It's too much. So he just canceled inventory for tonight. He has a couple more weeks before the end of the year to get it done. And he's like, I wasn't really like feeling it anyway. So it's not really that big of a deal to cancel it. It only takes a couple hours, but it would have meant that he wouldn't be there in time to pick her up. So he'll go and get her and take her home and I'll be home in an hour after that and then I'm gonna be done for the day. I'm gonna wanna climb into bed and just be done. So look at all the lights, you guys. I can't show you like a ton of what's around me because it kind of gives away where I live, but. Can you see all the Christmas trees? And they've lit even more trees this year and it's so fun to see it all like that. lit up at night, it's so fun. Someone is quite happy that yarn is once again on sale. How many are you going to buy? These are $8 a piece. Are you sure that's the color? It is. I thought they were more expensive before. So eight times four is, are you gonna take your other one apart and start over? No, I'm just gonna connect it. Okay. So let's do the math and see if you have enough money. Someone is happy, yes? Mm -hmm but we had a hard, hard conversation in the car, right? Are we willing to, we have a big burden. I'm gonna make an analogy here with you real quick because we're kind of in the private corner. We have a big burden that you're carrying. And if we take away one, it won't. If we go to therapy and work on this burden, and then we work on this burden, and then we work on this burden, then what are you left with? One. A smile on your face. We gotta work through our burdens, okay? Deal? Yeah. All right, Ashley, we got the right color? Yep. You have your blanket, she's already started back there. Wanted to double check it. It matches? 
Yes. Okay. You can't work on that tonight. After it's here, you have to shower and go to bed. Okay? Making that deal on camera. So I get it on record. Cheer nights are always an extra tired night. So, off to cheer. be there for three hours. It is a long night. So, I didn't really preface that little bit with Ashley, but I realized kind of in the moment when she was stacking these up that, um, it was a kind of a good analogy for her in the moment to help her understand the conversation I had with her in the car going down to get the yarn based on the conversation I had to have with her therapist. She refused to do the call with her therapist today, which is a pretty standard practice for her. She has gotten more more willing to like start the call, have a small conversation, have one learning lesson from her therapist. And then she usually excuses herself to the whatever activity she wants to go do. But the hard conversation I had to have with her therapist today was I'm, I'm kind of at not my wits end, but I'm out of ideas on how to help her with the anxiety if, and his end of it was, yeah, I'm, that's why she needs to come and talk to me because you're not the therapist. I've given you as many tools as you can get. Um, she needs to start talking to me. And he said that we've given her the flexibility of being able to leave the room and not join the call for the whole time. But we're coming full circle where, and I, she's probably comfortable with me sharing this because it's we're pretty open with it. She's back to using food as her control for anxiety to the point where she now has stomach aches and she's yelling and lashing out and getting mad at me for food. And it's taken a toll on my, on my mental capacity as a mom and a person because there's only so many times I can get beat up. I had a hard conversation with my sister today. I said, I just don't want to be with her when she has to eat. I don't want to even be home. I purposely like went and sat in Jason's car for an hour and a half the other night with him. That's why we were together taking Abby to the high school while she did yearbook pictures because I didn't want to be home with Ashley. And that's a hard reality to like get to as a parent. She was safe at home. She had siblings to take care of her. She was fine. Um, and the therapist reassured me tonight that that's very normal <laughs> to not want to be around your children. And it's very healthy to remove yourself from a situation with your children so that you can help them later when you're stronger. To take a break, recoup yourself so that you can go back stronger. And I've told her all that tonight that was the hard conversation we had in the car that I no longer want to be around her when it's eating time and the four or five hours she's home from school at night is a majority of the time where she needs to be eating so if I don't want to spend time with her during those times that's sad I had to have a hard conversation with her and kind of say it's now no longer a choice whether you want to stay on that call or even get on it to begin with it's now me saying now is the time you're gonna get on that call. You're gonna get this therapy because I can't help you any longer. You need to start hearing it from the doctor. That's hard conversations to have with your kids and she's nine. So the logic button has not fully grown in their little brain. As a parent, that's just hard. And so when I had that moment with Ashley with these, these are her anxiety burdens and I can't take them away from her. I can't set them down. I can't take them out of her hands. She's got to learn the tools to give herself the, the ability to get rid of them herself. It's hard being a parent, but it's especially hard to be a kid, I guess, with anxiety. I never dealt with that. So I don't, and I told her, I said, I've never dealt with anxiety. I don't, I don't know how you feel. I don't know how to make it go away. That's what a doctor is for. <laughs> I, I don't know. I want her to get the help. I'm willing to like keep working on it with her and yeah, I'm going to sit here and wait until she is done. I only have about 20, 30 minutes 
until she's done with cheer or done with tumbling. Um, I saw the drill team practicing right before her tumbling team. <laughs> I want her to do drill team because she's really fallen in love with the tumbling and lifting and stunting part of cheer. And I we talked about it as we kind of walked up and saw the girls kind of dancing in the class before her. And she's like, I think that's what I actually would really enjoy doing because she loves halftime performances during cheer. And I was like, drill team is only that. Like it's all performance. I don't know. And, it, and I talked to another mom and <laughs> her daughter was a teenager in that class. And she's like, she started when she was seven. And this is where she's at now. And now she's a junior coach for one of the other classes in a different building. And she's like, if your daughter is really loving that kind of stuff, I'm glad you're starting her young because she's going to be able to go, go through all these little classes at the community center and the youth programs that they do through the city. And she's going to really be in good shape to like get up to that when she's a teenager. So that's kind of fun for her um, to kind of explore and learn how to do. And um, I'm just excited for the chance that she can have these opportunities. But I'm going to just sit and zen for a little bit because I've kind of chatted your ear off and um, if there's anything exciting at our little activity tonight or cute displays I'll show you those otherwise I'm gonna end my night and just kind of decompress thank you for joining us um, on my little adventure today and uh, we'll pick back up next time take care the magic places in the world I've been to. This is where my heart is. Oh, you know it's true. No matter where I go, I'm coming home to you.